if there was ever a need for us to embrace the moral and the business case for diversity and the creating of inclusive cultures, it is now. Dr. Johnetta B. Cole, a well-known American anthropologist, museum director, and educator, recently sat down with Dr. Stephanie Adams, Dean of the Batten College of Engineering and Technology at Old Dominion University. In an onstage Oprah-style conversation, Cole described the barrier of success for women and minorities, particularly those seeking opportunities in STEM-related fields, to our inherent human bias. The bias is so deep that women and people of color just don't do science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So the first thing we got to do is we got to acknowledge that bias. The former university president and former director of the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art believes that addressing bias is the key to achieving organizational diversity and inclusion goals. When we understand that bias, mitigate against it, and begin to bring increasing numbers of women and people of color into engineering, we are doing one of the most important things that can be done to contribute to greater diversity. Cole made it clear during the hour-long conversation that universities have to do more than talk about diversity and inclusion. They must create and enforce policies that include a regular evaluation of diversity and inclusion progress. If having a diverse student body, faculty, staff, if we really care about that, we need assessment, we need measurement. The things we care about, we measure. The things we care about, we periodically evaluate. And the things we really care about, at least some of them, we put money behind it. Or if we don't put money there, we put care and attention. So we got to acknowledge there's an issue. We've got to own our biases. And then thirdly, we've got to have policies and procedures that mitigate against these biases. Cole stressed that a diverse and inclusive environment creates a more successful workforce. The evidence is overwhelming that in a diverse workforce, we get more and different ideas which allow us to do things differently and often far more successfully. As for what that means for education, we can't carry out the mission of our higher education institutions without diversity and an inclusive environment. When our students, women and people of color, do not see themselves reflected in the classroom, then they easily not only buy into the biases, they begin to live them out. And so their list of things that they would like to be doesn't include engineering. That's not for me, says she. I've never seen anybody who looks like me who's an engineer. And so obviously among our tasks is to bring onto the faculties of engineering schools folk of such diversity that all of our students can say, oh, well, if she can do that, then so can I. Amid widespread racism, Cole grew up in a family of high achievers in Jacksonville, Florida. Her great-grandfather was Florida's first black millionaire, having co-founded the state's first insurance firm in 1901. Cole entered Fisk University at age 15 before transferring to Oberlin, where she graduated with a BA in anthropology. 
She went on to earn a master's and a PhD in anthropology from Northwestern University. In addition to my parents, my community, including my grade school teachers and the Brownie and Girl Scout leaders and the librarian and the segregated place that I grew up, I, gra I gain, excuse me, enormous inspiration and courage from others. Cole made history in 1987 when she became the first African-American woman to serve as president of Spelman College, founded specifically for the education of women of African descent. Under her leadership, Spelman completed a $113.8 million capital campaign, the largest sum ever raised by an historically black college or university. She later repeated her fundraising magic as president of Bennett College in North Carolina, the only other university in the U.S. dedicated to educating black women. I would hope that in coming to Old Dominion University, and particularly to the Batten School of Engineering, I hope that any interactions that I have would at least trigger the idea that our world, that our nation, that our colleges and universities, that our schools of engineering will be far more effective when they are places of great diversity. Renee Dunman, Assistant Vice President for the Office of Institutional Equity and Diversity at ODU, served as MC and presented Dr. Cole with ODU's first John R. Broderick Diversity Champion Award on behalf of Old Dominion University. For the Batten College of Engineering and Technology, this is Keith Pierce.